What's up and welcome to FPL Today. I'm your host JNO. Welcome to the channel and welcome to my team for Game Week 9 where we look at my team and how they performed last game week and what I'm going to do moving on to Game Week 9 and hopefully it will give you some insight into what I do and help you pick your fantasy Premier League sides. And my team for Game Week 9 is brought to you by the FPL Today Teespring store where you can pick up yourself some FPL Today merchandise. Check it out in the link in the description and represent the flock, the FPL Today family. So getting into today's video and we're looking at the transfers of course first that I made for Game Week 8 and I'm very, very happy with my transfers for once. I brought in two Manchester City players and of course they then went on to beat Stoke 7-2 and the two players I brought in were Gabriel Jesus and Raheem Sterling for a total together of 28 points. Gabriel Jesus came in with 13 points from two goals and three bonus points and Raheem Sterling came in with 15 points, one goal, two assists and three bonus points as well. Both had a great game, but there were so many good Manchester City options like Kevin De Bruyne, Leroy Sane, David Silva, and of course, with Sergio Aguero on the bench to come back in. There's so many options there. The only issue is rotation, who is always going to play, but I'm very happy with the transfers that came in for game week eight. The only thing I could have done better was to captain one of these two because Harry Kane didn't do that well. So the top performers, and we don't change two of them because my two transfers in were my two best players for game week eight. And the other standout player was Christian Eriksen, who was very close to going out of the team for Raheem Sterling, but instead I took out Mkhitaryan for Raheem Sterling, which turned out to be a great move as Christian Eriksen came in with 11 points from one goal and got three bonus points and looked like the star man in that Tottenham Hotspur side. So looking at my team and how it did overall for game week eight, and there were some other players that did rather well for me. Tom Carroll managed to get eight points from an assist in the Swansea game and Swansea also kept a clean sheet. So that meant Carl Norton also got six points. So overall I had about five players that did really well for me. Unfortunately, Mohamed Salah didn't do as well as I was hoping. I figured he'd be more likely to score than Mkhitaryan would to get an assist. And he did come close a couple of times, but Salah only got three points. Burnley didn't keep a clean sheet against West Ham, which meant he only got two points on the clean sheet. Ben Davies, unfortunately, was taken ill before the game, and that is why Vertonghen played at left back instead of Ben Davies. Potentially, Ben Davies may have been able to help that Tottenham Hotspur side score more goals. Rob Elliott was part of a game where two goals were scored against him against Southampton. Alonso, Chelsea didn't really turn up against Palace, which was very, very disappointing. And then Harry Kane didn't really do much for me and Nias didn't even start came on as a substitute uh, which is okay because I didn't really have anyone else on the bench to come in for him with Foster, Davies and Chalaba all with doubts even to play for the next game week as well. So my team going into game week nine and the way it looks currently is Rob Elliott is in goal because Ben Foster looks like he is injured. I'm going to try and find out how long he's injured for. If he's not out for that long, I probably won't transfer him out. But there is someone I'm considering to bring in for Ben Foster. We've got Davies. I'm waiting to see if he can also play against Liverpool at home, although Spurs haven't looked that great at home but I don't have many, many options as far as defence goes. Alonso against Watford at home, I'm just waiting for that score. And Alonso would be an easy defender to take out because everyone else is cheaper than him. But I feel like with injuries and such there, I need to focus elsewhere first. Hopefully that will pay off for me, but I am worried about Marcus Alonso's lack of return so far and the fact that Chelsea aren't getting clean sheets. Norton comes in purely because B is against Manchester City and Mbemba doesn't seem to be playing. Playing, so Norton seems like the best option. Against the Leicester side that usually score goals, I'm not too confident in a clean sheet. We then have the midfield of Carroll, Sterling, Salah and Eriksen. I like the three midfielders and Carroll as well after his assist. I'm hoping that opens the floodgates for Carroll to get more assists. Sterling, great option against Burnley. I'm hoping for a similar performance as they had against Stoke. And Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspurs are sides that can perform in any game at any given time. So one of those two may get transferred out, but I doubt it at the moment. And then up front, we have Nias, Jesus and Kane. Nias probably needs to come out of the side, although I'm not sure who I'd bring in for him, which is the main issue there. 
Jesus I'm very happy with and probably take my captain's armband because Kane is playing at Wembley and I've been stung enough times by picking Kane as my captain at Wembley. And so we finish off with the potential transfers and you'll notice there isn't a striker on this list yet because there's no one in that price bracket similar to Nias that I'm confident in although I know I need a striker that is going to start. So it could be my transfer for game week 9 is a striker but the moment the players I'm looking at Fabianski is the goalkeeper I'm looking at to come in for Ben Foster if Ben Foster is out for a while at 4.6 million. He's appeared in every game, got four clean sheets out of eight and has had 32 saves in total. His fixture list doesn't look amazing with Arsenal in the middle away, but Leicester and Brighton, especially the Brighton game, hopefully can get a clean sheet there. And he could get lots of save points against Leicester and Arsenal, which would definitely help his point total. And then in defence, I'm looking at Jeff Cameron because of Stokes good fixtures moving forward at 4.4 million he might save me some money on someone if i brought him in for alonso that would be a big big saving he's appeared six times for stoke and he's had four attempts on goal with two chances created as well but it's mainly the hope that stoke can get some clean sheets although the defense hasn't looked amazing so my defensive transfer target might move elsewhere if i figure out a better option and then ricarlison i'm starting to think it's time to pull the trigger on him and bring him into the side it's 6.2 million he's had eight appearances he had 26 attempts on goal and has created 11 chances seems a very important player for watford and even with chelsea and everton away in the next three and stoke in the middle there i'm definitely tempted to bring him in because i'm worried i'm going to be missing a trick with ricarlison he could be a standout option for this season. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this video as always. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and consider hitting the notification bell if you want to know when my videos go live. And on Twitter, at JNO United, I am putting up every Monday my schedule for going live so you can plan and try and get involved on the streams. Also, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing if you like FPL content. I've been JNO, this has been FPL Today, and remember, it's all about the game.